my name is Brian Lucy, and I'm a mastering engineer here in Los Angeles at Magic Garden Mastering, which is my building. I thought I would be a broke musician my whole life, and I was okay with that. Uh, but in the 90s, I was frustrated with the recordings that I could get, and I started to engineer and record myself. And eventually that led from a small budget up to a full-blown analog studio. I didn't see the need to be cloistered in a windowless cave. So what I did here was something that has the potential for fresh air and windows, and it was a, a bit of a risk. <laughs> Uh, I committed to the space before I had built it. So the low end is being trapped and treated, but it's really going up through the building. So my main concern here is highs and mids and a little bit of the low end. And, and I also like to be close to speakers. I'm not a fan of being a long way away from the speaker. I like the intimacy of a seven, eight foot triangle. And the cost was, you know, in the tens of thousands versus the hundreds of thousands to get a top level result. So it was a, a, a bit of a ballsy move, but it worked out and uh, I'm really happy being here. Trinoff came in the picture through actually my dear friend, Jonathan Miller, who's a TV and film composer, and he brought a mix over one day. And I said to him, this is maybe the best mix. No, this is definitely the best mix you've ever done. And he starts to say, you know, this word, Trinoff, Trinoff, Trinoff. I'm like, what? what are you saying? I, I had no idea. So he's telling me about Trinoff and you know, he's a composer, so he likes to work in an untreated natural space, uh, a space that's completely organic, right? So what I'm doing here is obviously not that. So he, he uses the full extreme. And I said, well, I, I gotta hear it. So I came over, he's 10 minutes away and he turned the Trinoff off and we listened to the same track and it was the worst thing I've ever heard. It was horrific. And then he turned it on and I was like, oh, well that's, I mean, the speakers obviously aren't the greatest, but this is a very useful result. I was like, I could work here. I could, I can hear that being a thing. And that, that was it. I'd heard his work for 25 years. Here he is in a terrible space with what I consider terrible speakers making the best thing he's ever done. From there, I started to investigate the product for myself and spent some time with it. I wanted to have a mobile rig and so I took an ST2 and I took it to the worst corners of the building and I put different speakers up with the ST2 and I spent like two months with different configurations of speakers, amps, and settings in the ST2 in different parts of the space. I mean, I don't like to A-B things because when I do, I'm totally obsessive about it and I do it until I get to the end of the earth with it. So I, I went to the end of the earth with the ST2 and I, I've basically found the right speakers that worked. I found the right settings that worked. I found solutions that were very easy to set up. And it started with me doing more extreme settings. And then I came back to sort of more natural settings. And I sort of figured out what that balance is and how to do that all pretty quickly and easily. So, so it was a intense couple months, but I, I feel like I got to the bottom of it and was very pleased. You know, it's, it's really nice. When things moved into Atmos, when I went into the Demon, from working with the ST2, I knew that five minutes after turning on the Demon, I would be having a top level Atmos room, period. I had no doubt. And that's what happened. I turned it on, it worked. And then I, I got to work. And the first record I did was the Greatest Showman soundtrack. Five minutes of tweaking. It's more in those five minutes, which obviously represents all the work that you all have done, all the, all the experience, in that five minutes to set up the Atmos room. That was more than two people could have done with, with 20 or 50 grand in treatments because you're getting into the crossovers, you're getting into the speakers, you're getting into the measuring. You're not measuring it to a quarter inch or a millimeter, you're, you're measuring it on a much tighter scale. So, you know, from an Atmos standpoint, it was just, it was beautiful. I didn't have to worry too much about where everything went. I knew it would just 3D resolve itself and it did just like that. That to me is absurd. Like that, that to me sounds, I mean, look, we live in the DIY era. So everybody thinks they can do everything themselves. Sure, I get that. And, and I'm, I'm all for people's free will and their optimism. That's, that's great. Now, having said that, you, you have decades of training from people who have combined all sorts of sub-disciplines of acoustics into something that allows me to, you know, put up this 
very clever four-headed microphone, press the button, and five minutes later, I'm making the greatest showman in Atmos. You can't beat that. I don't think that you could do yourself. I actually, even in stereo, don't think you could do it because look what you'd be doing. You Maybe you spend $50,000 in treatments. I still don't think you would get there. And like, why would you bother, right? You spend on ST2 and a microphone and then and in 10 minutes, you're using the expertise of people with decades of wisdom you don't have. You know, that that's me. I'm, I want to use their intelligence for my benefit. I don't, I don't want to learn all of that. I, I don't have time for that. People are experts in certain fields. And when someone is an expert and you can benefit from them, maybe you should. My journey with Trinoff is similar to my journey with Atmos. My, my initial feeling is skepticism, verging on cynicism. And with some open-mindedness and some effort, then the result is something really quite amazing. You know, so my skepticism with digital correction of any sort has moved into a full embracing of something because I realized that people have spent decades making a product that's very easy to use. And, and similarly, it mirrors my, my feeling with, with Atmos, which was like this corporate thing that I hate to like, this is actually a really amazing evolution of the art form that is moving music reproduction forward. And so I just want to thank the people at Trinoff for making something that has made my life infinitely easier. And frankly, the Atmos studio situation would be impossible without the Demon 12. It just, it wouldn't happen. And instead, five minutes later, I was working on The Greatest Showman. So thank you. Thank you.